be making basics. What's going on YouTube? Beat Making Basics back again with another dope video. If you're new to my channel, please do me a favor. I want you to go ahead and subscribe and go ahead and hit the thumbs up if you like today's content. Now today, I'm gonna be covering the game tool in Logic Pro 10.7, all right? The game tool and how we can actually use this in real life, you know what I'm saying, apply to actual music production. So. Let's just talk about this. You do have to have Logic Pro 10.7, uh, the latest version of Logic Pro 10, but basically you can have access to what's called a game tool. So what's the game tool? So if you scroll over here to the very top of your screen, right under where you see the transport uh, window, okay, or where you see this guy right here, place where you see the tempo and all that type of stuff, um, you can click on, excuse me, click on either the left click tool or this tool right here. And at the very bottom, there's something called the gain tool. So let's just click on that. Um, as you can see here with audio, all right, you're gonna see this like yellow line here. And that's like uh, basically for raising the volume or lowering the volume. So let's say when it comes to like gain staging, things like that, or just say if you have a track that's coming in too hot, you can come over here and like instantly turn it down. So like for instance, this hi-hat, it's not coming in hot, but let's just check it out. And it would probably would be coming in hot if I just go ahead and turn it all the way up. See, it's coming in like right at the top level here. So say, say if I wanted to go ahead and turn that down, without actually coming in here, I can do it through the game stage, or the game. Turn this down some. So this is actually a real good hack here, especially when it comes to actually like game staging your tracks. Um, you know, sometimes when you're, you know, building your beats and stuff like that, one of your tracks might come in a little too hot. So like, um, this is a great way to like, instead of having to apply a game plugin on each one of these tracks to do this, this saves a whole lot of time. Now, I had the question um, for myself, and I know y'all are probably gonna also be having this question. You might be asking like, hey, well, what about with MIDI? Did, will this work with MIDI too? Or is it just gonna be with audio, okay? Don't worry, let's go ahead and actually uh, go to this other session. Um, this session right here has um, all MIDI files. So this is right before we like export this as uh, audio or whatever. But as you can see, if I scroll down here and click on these options and go down to the gain tool, if you have um, your inspector window open, okay, on the track that you actually uh, do this on right you're gonna see or notice that you can still use this game tool so let's just do this I'm gonna turn the snare all the way up and I'm gonna put it on solo just so we can hear how loud it's coming in usually like snares kicks stuff like that usually that kind of runs hot sometimes depending on the sample all right so it's not particularly doing it on this one but let's see if the kick will be too loud Well, it's not all the way too loud, but still this might be a good opportunity to use the gain tool on this. But um, when I'm scrolling over this, I don't see, I do not see the option, like that little yellow line, but you can still come over here and change the velocity with the gain tool, which is typically the same thing. So if I just click on here and scroll down some, if you look to the left right around here with the inspector window open you'll see that I'm an effect I'm affecting uh, the velocity of the MIDI now the only problem with this then becomes looks like you have to do this on each individual one so like before you do this technique you're gonna probably want to go ahead and 
like click on the track and then make sure that the whole track is highlighted so that all of these uh, the velocity settings are all the same on all of these compared to up here where some of these velocity settings are different again pay attention to right here but when you do it like highlight everything you can basically take the velocity down or the gain of this um, MIDI you know what I'm saying take that down by highlighting everything at once, okay? So you can't visually see it, but you can if you have the inspector window and you pay attention right over here. Again, I hope this helps out a whole lot because I think it's gonna actually save me some time uh, when it comes to like the mixing aspect of my tracks. Um, with me, I like to do some slight gain staging before I mix my tracks. I like to take my track, right, like my beat right here, uh, with that is in MIDI fa uh, format and I like to go ahead and export these files to audio and so before you do that you want to make sure that some of these um, files are not or all of the files are not coming in hot or whatever so this is something to think about here so let's just do a save as real quick do a, a C version and if I was to come over here just to double check and make sure that everything is uh, the proper way um, I would go over here to maybe like the hook that has everything in here and then I'm just gonna listen to all of these tracks to make sure that they don't you know peak or whatever so I'm just gonna highlight everything push option and then click on this it's gonna take everything to nominal gain that I click on and then now I can come over here and one by one begin to see if this is if it's too loud or not okay so like for instance it's not too loud, but you know, still peaking. So you want to leave a little headroom here. So I'm just going to click, remember, highlight everything when it comes to it being MIDI. You want to make sure that you click on whatever tool that you're using, okay? If you're using the this side of it or this side, I usually always use the pointer side. So just scroll down to Gain Tool, make sure everything is highlighted, and then you could just come over here and, uh, hold on, let me do this again. I don't know why it's not letting me uh, see the gain going up or down. There we go. Sometimes stuff go, does weird stuff. But anyway, let me do this again. All right, babe. So it's doing it with the clap. It's doing it over here as well. Let me do this. Huh, that's interesting. Anyway, you can you can you can come over here and make it happen. You can actually kind of come over here and do this this way as well. But you pretty much get to the point of what I'm saying here. So I can come over here to each track. And let's say the snare. All right, and I can come over here, highlight everything, and just take this gain tool down. Now the snare is coming in a lot uh, softer. Some headroom there. So gain tool saves a whole lot of time because before you would have to come over here and add like another plugin go down here utility gain stereo and too many clicks of the mouse you feel me compared to right here i just come over here to this tools scroll all the way down gain tool and now any of these i can come and you know raise the volume uh raise the gain or, or lower the gain basically um you can do this with MIDI or with audio. So audio is going to truly be gained. And with MIDI, it looks like it's going to be your velocity settings that you're going to be changing. So anyway, y'all, appreciate y'all watching. Make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Um, subscribe. I, don't, I have a <laughs> subscriber say I'm saying subscribe, not you know leaving out the B. So subscribe to the channel, okay? And um, we're coming back to back with bangers, man. We're, we're doing our best to do uh, daily videos. If we don't drop daily, we're definitely dropping every single week, several times. So make sure you get subscribed to the channel. Also, go to my site, BeatMakingBasics.com, okay? BeatMakingBasics.com is your one-stop shop to help 
improve the quality of your beats, especially if you're a beginner. We have courses that you can download and purchase. Um, the cool thing about that is you don't have to have some type of a login once you purchase the courses. Once you purchase the courses, they go directly to the email. You can download them and put them directly under to your computer. Never to have to worry about a down, a, uh, you know what I'm saying, some type of internet connection after that or some type of a login or whatever to log into the courses. So that's going to be very beneficial. We also have uh, loop kits and drum kits, okay? And those are all royalty free, meaning that after you pay, uh, for the drum kit or loop kit, you don't owe me anything if you make beats with it and sell them to artists, etc. etc. Okay, last but not least, we also have a one on one service, and something that new that I'm rolling out is we have a 15 minute um, option and then we have the hour option. So, for some of you all, the hour option was just a little bit too expensive, and that's cool. I understand maybe you don't want to, you know pay that much for a simple question. If that, if you have a simple question, you're gonna to wanna to use the 15 minute option, it's a little cheaper, um, but you can go and book just 15 minutes at a time to get your questions answered. So say if you have something quick that you need, like, man, you know, I need to install a plugin, or hey, you know, can you just check this mix real quick? Just make sure, what would you recommend me turn it up or down? Or, you know, just little stuff like that, you might wanna do the 15 minute, um, one-on-one -on -one with me where I do is one-on-one -on -one zoom call but if you have something more in depth we can do the hour whatever you know what I'm saying go to the site beatmakingbasis.com and make sure that you're subscribed to my channel thank you so much for watching I'll see you in the next video route